All of the food we eat and much of the clothing we wear comes from plants and animals that are raised on farms. Farms are different in type, in size, and even in name. Welcome to Barn Talk. What happens at the barn stays at the barn until now. We're going to let it all out for you guys. Today is a special podcast. Very, very special. I'm here with my partner in crime, Torque, as always. Torque, we'll throw it over to you. What do you got to say? Well, there's a lot. This is a, this is a special episode because not only is this our first three-person podcast, but it's also a family reunion. So sitting on the other side of the table uh, at a safe distance is my brother Trenny. Wow. Welcome to Barn Talk. It's about to get real. <laughs> and if if anybody if anybody hasn't already figured out, uh, this would be my middle brother. Middle. Middle brother. Yep. We've talked they, about you before. Mm, they are the most special ones. They truly are. Truly. So Trent, what brings okay. you to Southeast Iowa? Well, you know, this has become truly one of my most uh looked forward to throughout the year uh adventures <laughs> it's an adventure when it I is an there. adventure but i love it every year i come back home cue music of uh country roads <laughs> <laughs> there we go that's truly my theme song country roads we Take love we home. love having you here it's always a that's good time so good. every time you come here this will do farm is always more enjoyable and especially more. The more whistlers around here, the better. Yeah. Yep. There you go. But you know, I don't know when we want to break into this, and you, I think you have to give your market talk first, right? Yeah, like we got to do the market I get off update on my own. Because let me just tell you what: as much as my little brother here, our little brother, if we were including, you know, my older brother Todd. Again, I'm the middle, so it takes one older, one younger. I'm in the middle. I've learned to embrace the middle. Number it's good that you. Good. It's good that you've grasped simple math. You've got that much down at least. So <laughs> we're good on that. And if the teachers were still alive, they would be like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> well, we have that in common. But anyway, um, but yeah, um, it's just so. It's this is like one of my favorite parts of summer. I've come back for the last couple of years, and. Um, it's always been a special time in my life. I think I we're fit. Love it. I think we're forgetting a, a really important detail. It's the week of the Fourth of oh, July. That's right. Yeah, it's we got the red, of, white, and blue. We got red and blue God behind Trent here. America, <laughs> you continue to talk, and I'll be the music in the background. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Trent got here on uh, what Thursday before Thursday night, and um, so we've had a few days. Uh, we all we all or took of the pork ribeye. We got that out of the way. And uh, so good. Tuscan kudos Moon. Kudos to Tuscan Moon. Oh. Um, we could even do a whole podcast just covering Tuscan Moon. It was it was an Delicious. exciting evening for sure. Uh, Lord have mercy. I Trent can sing. He you can already sing. know that you can do that with the few well, minutes we've been on the air. I'm but. retired now. <laughs> <laughs> Celine Dion, you don't need to call me to sing along with you. <laughs> Okay, well, before we get too far down the road in and it tradition, it will be a rabbit hole. <laughs> it probably will be a rabbit hole. Uh, in in uh, barn talk tradition, we're going to give an update to the markets because there's a lot that's happened, and uh, when it's all said and done, not much has changed for all that has happened. But I'll give you I'll give you the rundown. Um, so corn locally is about seven dollars. I think about seven oh six maybe. Um, which that's, that's a pretty good number. And there's a couple of hog feeders that apparently have decided that they think that by fall corn's going to get high. So they're bidding up because the price of the river, I think is about maybe like six, six ninety something, but there's some local feeders that are bidding up. So you can get over $7 for corn. Um, and beans, I don't know, fourteen sixty five maybe something like Sounds that at the right. river. Um, but, you know, we had a crop report that came out, or the USDA report came out, and the ending stocks are down. Um, the acres, I think, are up a little bit, but the yield, if I'm, you know, 
USDA, they don't know anything anyway. I, I don't have much faith in, in what they think the numbers are, but the traders do. And um, the average yield is down for both corn and beans. So that put a big shot in the arm um, last week, but then uh, we've had rain across most of the state of Iowa. And our corn looks phenomenal. It's honestly, we were we were worried that it was going to get too dry. Yeah. Uh, we were pr- we were praying we, for rain for a we, little bit. Yeah, we were praying hard, and we, apparently we prayed enough because it got the job done. It's yeah. thank you, Lord Jesus. You heard the prayer. <laughs> he did because it, hallelujah. It, it rained, and then it got sunshine, and it rained, God and it gets sunshine. A praise yeah. offering today. Yes. I think we had about what Round probably a, a five. Five to seven day period where it rained. Somewhat, it rained every day. Yeah, it rained, like. and then it come out with the sun, and then it, yeah. I mean that's. Thank you, Noah. If you know corn, you're a farmer. You yeah. know that's what you want. So the the upside is the corn looks phenomenal. Uh, the downside is that I had my yard just about dead. Just it was oh. getting nice and burnt. Yep. Um, mowing had almost come to a screeching halt, and now then it's like spring all over again. Um, so I went out last week and walked through and took tissue samples. This is the first year that I've tissue sampled corn. Um, you go through and you take the top. with Kleenex? <laughs> uh, n- no, no, Trent. You just, now pay attention. I'm going to explain okay. this for you. This will be your agronomy. This will be your agronomy 101 today. Um, so you take agronomy. the top fully developed leaf. So the, as the leaves come out on a corn plant, they come out at the top. Okay. And you take the, the, highest fullest or the highest fully developed leaf okay. and you want to get um i think they want 20 or 25 samples to a, a you put them in a bag and then they take that and they smash it down and grind it up and then they come back and tell you if those corn plants are deficient in anything okay and so then if they are you can make the decision whether you want to spend more good money after bad and when you're spl- when you're flying on your fungicide, you can add a micro pack. And usually, if you're short, you're going to be short like boron and zinc. And those are nu- those are micronutrients. And what is f- fungicide? Fungicide is um, just exactly that. It keeps fungus from growing oh. on your on your corn plants. Uh, so like gray leaf spot. Um, I don't know some of the other ones, but. Um, we fly that on when once the corn is in tassel and it helps the corn stay greener longer, which will help ear fill. So your kernels in your on your ears will fill completely and hopefully you'll get more yield. So that's the plan. And anyway, um, I think we talked about this. I know we've talked about it on the YouTube channel, but this year when we side dress corn, we we added boron, zinc, and we've always used sulfur, but we we basically did like a micro pack with the nitrogen. And if you looked at the corn right now, you'd, you'd pat yourself on the Beautiful. back and say, boy, that was a good decision. Mm-hmm. But uh, when it was burning up and you thought it was within days of turning brown, you're, you're like, thinking, mm-hmm. yeah, boy, that was smart throwing more money on it. But yeah. now, yeah, Turned now good. it now it really looks good. So anyway, um, that's kind of the, I guess I turned. We the, said this last year, though, too. We, what did we say this yes. year before when we planted? We said That's, we needed, we need some rain in July. Yep. So this month, if we get some rain, I'm going to be happy with it because yeah. it won't turn out. Burnt. Because yeah. This and, is exactly how it was a year or two years ago. It was great, yeah. great, 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 and then it burnt up. Well, last year would have been the best crop that we'd ever raised yeah. um, because for the yield it was, even when we didn't have rain for like July and August and into September. Um, but this year, I think the the one thing that we got was we had all that dry weather, and so this corn is rooted down really, really good mm-hmm. uh, because those roots went down searching for water. And then we got a lot of water, and I don't know, the, the forecast isn't too bad. I think we've got some chances of rain coming up. Um, you know, we've been dry for, I don't know, a week, seven days. Um, but when I walked through and took those tissue samples, you know, we had plenty of moisture at that point. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. But right now, the potential is excellent here in southeast Iowa. I would like to speak to all of the uh, bigwigs at the factory called Kleenex and just say, you know, these tissue samples, this could be a new campaign for you. <laughs> <laughs> because 
I'm going to look into this camera right here and speak to my fellow Americans. And there are people like me who were born here. Although sometimes I feel like, was I born here? Is this where I came from? Because they speak. If there are people that will, and there will be people after this podcast. Yes, there will. That subscribe, knowing that it's more than just barn talk. Uh, but there are people that when they hear the word tissue, it's like that game show or game game show uh, that you I'm going to say a word and you say what comes into your mind. Tissue, Kleenex, nose, snot, corn, yield, corn sample, uh, yellow sign, square. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is what people think. Like well, you're talking and I'm like picturing I have symbols popping out into orbit here of like tissue boxes and yellow yield signs and well that's a good point because one of the things that we want to do is and this is that's a small part of it is but we've talked many times about how everybody is i don't know what the statistic is but how many generations everybody is removed from the farm now you're only one generation because you grew up here I did. but there's a lot of stuff that has changed you keep telling me that i did and i do believe it yes you did no you were here <laughs> We've got pictures. I've got stories. We got proof. Yeah, we got, we proof. got pictures. And we're going to get into those stories today, yeah, too. Are. But before we get into the nitty gritty, yes. we're still going. We're, we're, I think we're just all excited. We're all jacked up. We're all ready to just talk and yes. interview Trent here and let Calm you guys down. get to know him. But how about Bitcoin? How about Tesla? Yeah. Give them the rest of the um, market update. Hey, I'll give you one. I'll give you one more. Cattle and hogs are still high, and I won't, you know, they're, they're, I think they've come off a little bit of where they were. But uh, the last time we talked, we were talking about wiener pigs, and I didn't have a price. Um, but uh, I heard the other day that wiener pigs are going for $45, $45, which I think this time a year ago, which was a pretty piss poor time in the hog business, I think they were going for about 10 bucks. So that tells you that the demand, and the outlook for the price of pigs is pretty high because wiener pigs are $45 a piece for, you know, a 10, 15 pound pig. That's kind of crazy. So anyway, um, uh, I think your food prices, I don't think there's going to be, I don't think there's going to be any let up in the price of meat in the meat case because uh, demand is there and there's not, the supply is not. So that's going to, that's going to play out here over the next few months. Um, Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin today is about 34,000. It, it Been spiked, it's, it spiked while. early. It spiked early, got up to 35, but it's kind of been in a holding pattern. I mean, it was down, it got down, I think 28 maybe. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot going on in that, in that world. You know, a lot of the miners are moving because China has been cracking down on the miners, which I think is great. They should all leave China and get the hell out of there. Um, a lot of them are coming to the United States, going to Texas. Um, El Salvador is switching over to the Bitcoin standard, and that happens September 1st. So there's a company, I think they're trying to install, like, it could be 1,500, but I want to say it's 15,000 Bitcoin ATMs in the nation of El Salvador. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of public knowledge. I thought a lot of people knew that that was happening. But, yeah. I mean, I talked to my friends, and they said, you know, El Salvador's going, their currency's going to be Bitcoin yeah. by September 1st. And people, my friends are like, what? Yeah. No one I, really knows that. But, yeah, yeah, just to clarify, El Salvador's fully going Bitcoin yeah, by September, September 1st. 1st, which is crazy. Yeah. Every citizen's going to get $30 in Bitcoin to start with to help them uh, – switch over and then when they get their paychecks and they deposit them in the bank um so they're running on the dollar right now and the reason they're doing the reason they're switching and i i honestly think you're going to see other nations do this because if you're a if you're a a smaller um i'll just say poor nation um you're running on dollars you're running on the u.s dollar that's what you trade in because that's what you have to trade in when you're trying to sell goods and buy goods and um, the United States, along with a lot of countries over the world, um, they're, they're printing money like it's going out of style. Mm -hmm. And so the U S is printing all these dollars. So the dollars that you have in your little country, El Salvador can't do nothing about it. Yeah. They're not worth as much. So you have inflation, but unlike the United States, you can't just print more dollars because 
it's not your it's not your sovereign um, uh, currency. currency. And so they're tired of this because they're at the mercy, and um, they're tired of being yeah. The mercy of it. They're getting tired of whipped up, getting whipped up on. So they're going to go on the Bitcoin standard and thumb their nose at the dollar. And they're the first, but they're not going to be the last. I think the next thing you're going to see is you're going to see a country in Africa. I don't know if it'll be Tanzania. I don't know if it'll be. Um, I don't know if it'll be Ethiopia. I don't know where it'll be, but it'll be somewhere there. And you watch over the next year. I think it's going to be super interesting. The adoption rate of Bitcoin. Anyway, um, that's that. Uh, Tesla, Tesla ended the quarter and they delivered over 200,000 cars, which is funny because the, the estimates that were first thrown out was about 185, 190,000. And then it, it kind of, as it got closer to the day that they announced, um, everybody realized that, oh, they're probably going to, uh, they're probably going to deliver more than that. So they started playing it down. And when they actually announced deliveries, I think CNBC ran with a story that they were disappointed or that they were disappointing which it yeah it's trash the financial media is trash anyway so they had a great quarter um it could have been better they they fought a lot of stuff um still covid problems they got chip problems not nearly as bad as the rest of the automakers but um they they had good deliveries and going forward i think it's only going to get better because berlin's about done and the austin plant's about done and i can't wait to get my cyber truck yeah i don't know i don't know how people are going to feel about that when you if you do get that <laughs> dad wants to wrap it in like i don't know what color he i think i'm going to gonna wrap, wrap it in the american flag oh lord uh, <laughs> that would be beautiful I love that. god bless america trying to be but, fine with it yeah. Okay. So that is the market Back to update. Our music. Ma- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the rambling market uh, update for today. Wow. Hey, sponsored by the Mercantile. We're going to sponsor this Let's one by mercantile. the Mercantile. So uh, shout out to this will do farmhouse. So my wife and Trent, really it's Trisha's sister actually mm. because I'm I feel like that uh, Trisha is the almost sister said that Trent's sister. It should have yeah, been. It really you know, should have been. I mean, we. Janelle, we love you, honey. They're besties. But we're besties. Um, so she is starting a new endeavor. So uh, we purchased a building in the great town of Washington. And uh, the 8th, July 8th, or I'm sorry, July 9th is the official opening. Yeah. Um, and it it is her, she's been pouring her blood, sweat, and tears in that. And um, if you if you see any of her stuff or any pictures of our home or either one of our homes, uh, you'll realize that uh, it doesn't use, yeah, it doesn't look like a place that I should live or me. Um, but she's there to uh, make the world look better. She so. like she likes to come down to my house and give Cat and I some pointers. I mean, our house well, would look like crap if my mom wasn't there to show us what. You are so sweet to say that because I'm glad you said it and I didn't have to plug for you. No, yeah, well, that his house looks God like crap. You. No, oh. well, that without. His oh, mom's yeah. right. input, right? Because you know there is that old saying: behind That's every not my... great man is a great woman. Great, right? And for my little brother, I mean, it's true. With the home that you completely redone, you could have redone it, but it would have been um, it would have been white a lot of walls milk. and picnic tables. I like, I like, <laughs> um, I like. I'm like, not attention to details. I don't. I don't think no. Dad and I have attention to details no. when it comes to decorating. That's, I like. I like can't. Fifty-five gallon drums, and you throw a sheet over it, and yeah. voila, it you have a you have ready. an end table. Yeah, I don't know. I she she always would come down and or when I lived there in high school or growing up in the house, she'd ask me, you know, well, how's this look? Yeah. What do you think about this? Yeah, and looks great. Looks great. So <laughs> really, we can't say enough for those of no. you in. Southeast, Southeast Iowa. Iowa. And wanting to come on the Barn Talk uh, bus tour that I will be leading in the future. And you're going to just, it's going to be so fun. We're going to pass out popcorn, peanut M&Ms. And depending <laughs> upon the hour of the day, we'll have some special cocktails. But anyway, um, the people will come here. But we're also going to go to the, the, mercantile the Mercantile in Washington. And there's other great stores. I mean, I know them because I've shopped at them. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. So you live, tell, tell everybody where you live yeah. today. Okay. Well, you know what, really, though, I got to say, before we start in on that, can I just say, I got to give 
And we just need to pause here for a minute because I pause. literally have to give credit out to you guys. Oh my gosh, I have my sunglasses. <laughs> well, everybody probably thought Woo! that Look you at were him. face reveal. Oh, face yeah. reveal. He's not bait. I know. Many of you probably thought I, that he was. This bait. Iowa sun will give you the greatest tan. Let me just tell you what. You don't need you get to the best to of both worlds. Forget Florida. Y'all need to come to Washington, Iowa and get your tan. Sorry if I, yeah. But anyway, I better take my glasses off because people will be out there going, why does he have his sunglasses on? I know how these podcasts. Are. We would have just told him because you have a yeah. glass eye and Sorry. they don't match. <laughs> He's so hungover. He just needs to cover up his eyes. No, I'm not. We drink a lot of iced tea in this family. Let me You drink you a lot of iced tea. Not me. I'm about and there I'm may... water, beer, milk. That's about it. Water, beer, and milk. Not a big pop guy either. Yeah, Not no. all in the same glass. No. That you used to be a, such a thing. What? Remember, like, I can think, like, 10 years ago, everyone drank pop. Well, I grew up on It was just, like, pop. the thing. Okay. Everyone just drank pop. But if I could transport these words that you all are saying right now, if you said the word pop, where I'm from in Pennsylvania, people would be like, wow, well, what's that? What's pop. Like, other parts of the country, it's called soda. Is it soda there? Is it soda or, or is it, it Coke? Like it's soda. It's got to be soda. Well, there's yeah. some places. That I think if you go to Texas, it's Coke. It's Coke. No matter what you want, what you kind ask. Of Coke you want Sprite. And what then, kind of Coke you got? And then in some places of the country, it's called soda pop. And then here, oh, it's those called people pop. just got too much time I mean, on their hands. I'm yeah, telling too many you words. because I I forget. Like from time to time in my life, I'm around people and I'm like, oh, do you drink pop? And they're like, where are you from? Like I don't know. Yeah, they think it's something wild and crazy. And I'm like, yeah, Pepsi. Yeah. It, do. Oh, man. You're one of was, those people. I thought it was something cool. And I'm like, well, it is cool. Anyway. But our generation, yeah. we were we were before the energy drinks because right. so all you, we grew up on pop. Pop. Mountain Dew. Yep. Pepsi and Mountain up. Dew. And Lawrence and Shirley Whistler that you've talked about before, you know, so much of our dad. I mean, we had a refrigerator in the basement. A refrigerator and freezer in the garage. Maybe there were two freezers in the garage because we, we had were to well designate equipped. one to the Schwan. Ah, uh, yes, the Schwan man. Schwan man. Schwan man. Do y'all have the Schwan man? There was here? no Amazon back. back oh, in those before days. Amazon, the <laughs> Schwan. <laughs> My mom. That's a podcast. <laughs> mom loved the Schwan what man. The hell? Yeah. Oh, and Schwan man and Avon. They got rich <laughs> on Shirley Whistler. <laughs> Thank you, <Yeah>. mom. <laughs> you but. Know, you know, you just milk came on the Schwann truck. Remember that big no, thing? No, I don't remember that. Okay, so here's the thing. You opened up your refrigerator. Those of you that... <laughs> now you're dating know. yourself. Well, I don't care because I am, I'm, I'm an antique. But you open up the refrigerator and there was this big, long uh, tube almost. Box. That went, and you, it had a handle on the top. But it was like, I don't know if it was two or three gallons, but you'd... Slide that into the side of your refrigerator, and then it had a red spout that you'd uh, take the plastic off yep. of and pop it out, and that's how you got your milk. You just put really, it. oh yeah. The, I don't know if Schwann's still, they still must have gotten that. rid of that later, but it was cause... perfect because you could still put all of the orange juice and cranberry juice and all that beside it. But boy, the milk—that's how milk was. It was delivered through. The Schwan Man. And then, of course, there was the... And then the tins that came out at the holidays, the beautiful peppermint uh, candy tins and, like, Shirley Whistler. I, I think would, Trent I think Trent really the enjoyed the, the food, <laughs> the food of childhood. Oh! <laughs> I did like the ice cream Stop. bars, the mm. pop-ups. Uh, it was all good, huh? It was you all good. It? Yeah. yeah, I had that. Sorry. I had that. But yeah, you got me going there. I'm like, oh, yeah. The throwing Schwan back, man. throwing it back. When you give me memories. But I want to start with the memory of where you all are coming from, okay? That was my first thing, and I need to bring it back to Barn Talk. So okay. if I could just take a minute here, because everybody that watches this podcast, is that what it's called? It's podcast, yes. Podcast, yep. They li America. Some listen. Some only some listen. Some listen. So you, you need have to watch. To, you have to paint <laughs> words with your, oh, you have to paint yes. pictures with your words. Trent. Well, let me just say, I am very tan. I have on a white baseball cap, and you need to tune in tonight with with looking at it. Cause, on the you know, YouTube. If you're me and Brad Pitt look a lot alike. Maybe not <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Santa. I get Santa vibes. Well, I've been told, you know, that people are going to say it, but don't spoil it for the children. I was kind of thinking Uncle Jesse from the Dukes of Hazard. Oh, there you go. 
Uh, I can see that. Oh, about your age. Okay, let's don't go too old. Anyway, but you know, I I walked in here today, and you know, I am you climbed of course, in here from here. I climbed in, but I first walked in from the barn. So I've listened to you know the first podcast, and then you know last night here we were listening to the one of you know our dad and uh, his time in the war and the stories, which my. Gosh, my brother is a walking freaking encyclopedia. <laughs> That's just because I had to listen to those stories because you and Todd no, weren't around. No, I think Alexa is on her way out in America's homes, and it's going to be <laughs> torque talk. Torque talk. I think in my house, I'd like to say, torque, tell me the weather. <laughs> Hello. Uh, the weather today is, you know, I think, I just don't know. I'm, I don't know whoever made Alexa, but... That sounds like a licensing licensing um, opportunity for me. There you go. That'd be multiple. That'd be a great. I'm gonna product. put that pillar. I'm you what, that's gonna be a pillar of my. Screw the, screw like the Yetis. We need to get the Torque Talk and yeah. technology. For the, and for those of you that you know really want to call him his special name, it's Torquey. He has not been Torque to me for I don't know how long. It's Torquey. I don't know. Hopefully. Well, that's yeah, better than Hey like Stupid, because for some no, people it's Hey good. Stupid. Oh. Oh, we got a error. spill. We got I'm a spill. Error. I knocked over my... Party foul, party Maybe foul. Maybe this is the time we go to a commercial. <laughs> if you'd like to order one of our This Will Do Farm uh, Yetis, these are available for sixty nine ninety five. Or if you'd like to sponsor one of our podcasts, we'll send you a lid for free. And if you'd like to sponsor two, we'll send you the bottom to accomplish it. <laughs> there you go. I think Trent might be our new customer <laughs> there we go. service. We need, we need to put you on all the ads. Oh, yeah. The gift of gab did not fall far from the tree. It made me, many of you, you know, as I was watching the one last night, I'm like, man, Torky and Soy, they just, they speak so beautifully. You both do. Um, but anyway, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bring in Brother Trenny and, oh, yeah. So it's what were you a, talking about? Yeah, what? Okay, so I was talking for, oh, I got to remember, a little bit they of told me to keep my hands down. Squirrel. I'm a squirrel. Uh, they, uh, so in coming into this barn today, I wanted to acknowledge first before we get going, this is a two hour podcast. Um, I have not been in this barn since high school. I mean, I don't even know if my senior year I was in this barn and it's amazing to watch these two boys walking into this barn. They just do it as though, I mean, it's, it's just, this is what it is. It's well, this barn is the office. And, the office, the barn talk. I wish there could have been a camera on me for coming into it because it's, I mean, it's beautiful, but it is like, wow. To be a brother and to walk back to your place that you were, you know, born and lived, because I, as much as what sometimes I feel like, <laughs> did I really live here? Because my little brother Torky knows more of the stories and probably Todd, our older brother does. I don't know. I, I did have, it's still trying to be diagnosed. You know, I just a little attention <laughs> deficit disorder. <laughs> so God bless all of you out there that just have a little trouble grasping it all. I am. I think you. we all do. You're in my heart. Uh, but you know, coming up here, I looked over even at the hay. <laughs> I said to you, how long has that did, been in did here? Did you bring this hay up? And he's like, no, it's been here. Since the 50s. And I'm like, Torky, seriously, how long? And he goes, since the 50s. Yes. I mean, are you really serious? Yeah, since because it's wire. So it's wire tied. So um, dad and Ray, um, my uncle Ray, they they bought a wire tie John Deere baler. And so through the 50s, um, so he bailed, they bailed a lot of straw because oh, yeah. he had sows and pigs right. in this barn and he used right. the straw for bedding. But um, they got rid of that baler. Somewhere, you know, somewhere in the late fifties or we maybe the early, twine. and we went to twine. Mm -hmm. And so, anything that was here that was tied with with wire has to be at least oh my at God. least nineteen sixty, but it's probably in the fifties. Um, yeah. And so, and it was at the bottom. And you know, if you're a good if you're a good farmer, you don't run out. So you know, you bail and you get to spring. And if you're not all the way out of of um, of uh bales you just put more on top and that's what they did because when we when we went to clean this out we were down to like the the bottom two layers mm -hmm. and i mean this 
And it then, wasn't like clear full. It was just yeah. literally probably to where my head's at. Two or three layers. Yep. So, yeah. No, this is original. That's like the oldest hay that was in this barn. I mean, yeah. Because this and is that's the why. But to many people, honestly, as you guys grow, you know, your viewers and people that perhaps don't, like as I said, yeah. when you all were talking about those words that, you know, you were saying like yield and yeah. whatever, I mean, you got to understand, I mean, there's people that hear that, like some of what you were even talking about. Again, I go back to, hey, what are they talking about? Yeah. And there's there's going to be people yeah. that, you know, and it's okay. But I'm yeah. like, people would look at this. And honestly, in our podcast today, it would be like a um, stage. That, right. like I think it, would it was be stage like, um, studio. Right. Like that's plastic. And they right. just prop it up there on wood, and and there it's yeah. not hay, but it, but this, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I walked into this barn, and I'm I'm climbing up here, and soy and torkey walk up here, and to them, they're going to get set up for an hour before we're even sitting here. I mean, it's mind boggling what the two of you go through, and I'm sitting over in the cocktail lounge. That you don't even see that I'm like. <laughs> well, they're seeing it today. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, it's in the shop. We bought chairs. We, we bought some leather chairs. I am a more of a noticer of all the things and whatever, yeah. but you all just dive into putting together the podcast and setting up the cameras. And I literally was taking it moment by moment by moment that I have. I mean, I am familiar back in my day if we rewind the tape. And though I am the most beautiful brother and, you know, <laughs> right, of course, right. no that doubt is, about that. Trans vanity you know, knows no limits. <laughs> all the things. Um, well, but I, I come, sorry. I mean, I, no, go I ahead. just look at the barn and I'm like, I remember when this was clear full of hay and, and I looked up to the very top and I said to Torky, I'm like, oh my gosh, are those the, Hey, like hey, steaks, forks. forks that dad used to use. Yep. And he said, yeah, yeah, they those are. are the original. And for many of you, I mean, like as you shared with that beautiful podcast that you and Soy did of, you know, talking, you know, a lot about dad. I mean, we all share that. We all have our memories, though yep. they may be different. And I really have to just say that you and Soy give it give dad and the legacy. I think it's cool for people, however long this goes and for all the people that come to it, it's important. As you said, Soy, you know, you have an obligation to just appreciate it and continue to take it to the next level. I mean, obviously we all have our gift. And for me that it was farming and all of it, it wasn't my gifting. I mean, I appreciate it now. I mean, we are sharers as brothers, you and Todd and I, that thank God we're, we're brothers that we've continued to hang in there with each other Yeah, because we could share the stories of the difficult times too. I right. mean, nobody out there needs to look at it and just think, Oh, isn't that wonderful? It's like an Iowa Disney World. Well, no, it's not really. <laughs> Family. It has been some rough roads, you know, and I'm all about acknowledging that. But That's with every family. Family is messy. There. Family gets messy. We've hung in there, though, and you are here. We're all here, and it is now for me, you know, as much as people would probably vomit in the bucket hearing me say it, but <laughs> it, it just is. Some people will look at it and go, oh, gosh. Do you pay him to say that? No, yes, we don't. do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it? <laughs> like the iced tea, vodka, yeah. water, or cranberry juice? You'll never know. You'll, You'll never, never know what's know. in that cup. Because <laughs> I'm this way at 6 in the morning, and I'm magnified at 11 o'clock at night. But, I mean, it's just beautiful. It's an honor to come back. And now I see it through, you know, grown-up eyes right. that I'm like, I, it's different. my appreciation is different. And I got to say, my first thing coming up this morning to the barn, <laughs> the only job that I did well was I was on the little uh, Ford tractor. Eight and Ford. When we were baling this hay that has been here from the 1950s. Now, I came along in 1965, so I started baling hay in uh, 1969. 
Oh. Dad didn't Ooh. know. I'm kidding. I don't know what <laughs> You were an early but bloomer. dad was like, yeah, well, I've got these boys. They need to get out there. And, you know, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> I was that child from day one. But a couple things I did well on the farm, uh, outside of washing hog pens. That Trent loved to power wash farrowing crates. I just was a good power washer what uh what was the phrase and i know what the phrase is but what was the phrase that dad told Most you iconic phrase when you I when know. you came to power wash and he checked you all out and you were ready to go and he said to you now one more thing yeah you always get it better than i do um but it's something talking about, about your quality of work yeah there's no well <laughs> that's what he said he'd come in and he'd be like well, Trent, uh, you, those hog pens over there, that was good. Or, I didn't get it. I didn't get the it. best. The best. But then I was going to say, the best job that you'll do is, is never good enough. No. What was it? The best job that you can possibly, possibly do, do is not too good for me. It's not too good for me. But yeah, see, he remembered. You, uh, as I said to Torky the other day, you are like a walking encyclopedia. And, and I don't know if you were like me, but didn't you? You always tried to hurry because you had something else you wanted to do. Because oh, let's face it, it wasn't that much me. fun. And our dividers, and our, so our farrowing crates, this was before the days of solid PVC dividers. So yeah. they, were, they, were, they were panels. They were like little mini gates. Yep. And um, so you had to flip them over. So you washed them one way then you washed them the other way and then you had to flip them over because they're round bar and you wouldn't get the yeah, bottom side but the easiest way to speed through that job if you had something to do was you didn't flip them and then dad always had to come inspect your work and then he would come and you know he'd be like yep yep looks good and then he'd grab one of those panels <laughs> and he'd flip it over and he'd just look at you and shake his head and go Call me when you're done. But the funny thing, <laughs> the, the most funny thing about it all is it truly was one of the jobs yep. that for me, I felt most like when you talk about building confidence in children yeah. or whatever, I truly felt most confident in doing that. Mowing the yard, pulling Straight the lines. Ford tractor back, lifting up the hay into this hay mow. Uh, doing it slowly. I could sit on that Ford with yep. the big wheel and dad taught me how to do that. So, throttle it all the way down. Mowing the yard, throttling down the Ford tractor, and washing hog pens. Yeah, you probably you good. your attention because you you're probably you probably did flip them. I probably did. Yeah, you probably did a good job. Your attention to detail is probably better than dad's. Yeah, right? because you at your point, you probably actually cared what dad thought. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was more like yeah. I had the idea that. Uh, no, that's a lie. The best job I can possibly do will never be as good as what you think yeah. it'll be. So I'm really not even going to try. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just argue about it for 10 minutes when we're done. Yeah. But, anyway. And the other thing, if I can just say real quick on that is I honestly remember that while I was on the Ford tractor and it was always hot, very hot when you were out there and you're just sweating and uh, how many more, loads how many more loads have to undo, but looking at this today i mean of course it's it's emotional for me because i'm like oh my gosh our dad touched those very yep. things and you know for if you're a son or daughter or some family member associated with, with that i told torky i said so hey torky you guys need to put lights around those yeah and he's like well at some point i think we will make yeah. it into a chandelier or something well he didn't say i said chandelier because right. you know, i'm bougie like that but you i would bougie. say to dad when i was on the ford tractor i was always like hey dad if we're done early enough tonight do you think we could go into bob and corny days and go swimming yeah like that was always my thing in the summer I just wanted to go to Bob and Corny days and our dad showing, you know, again, it has to do with though we were so different and the stories are endless with how our perception of mm -hmm. all of it is, um, you know, as a little kid. But for me, you know, when dad would acknowledge that and say, well, I'll have Shirley call him because of course we'd always go over to the house and say, mom, Call Bob Day. You know, you didn't get out your cell phone and just, <laughs> you know, kids today, it's like, yeah, just a minute. And you take a break and you call them or you text them, right? You don't even call. You just text right. them. 
But of course, dad would tell Shirley. Shirley would call Corny. Corny would ask her husband. For it's like s- the phone company. For some reason, our mom uh, gets referred to as Shirley a lot oh, because mom. Uh, my dad. And mine too. I don't know why. Yeah, our dad. <laughs> our dad. But for some reason, he would always refer to her as Shirley. Shirley. Now, he might have said to her, well, hun, honey, sweetheart. You say, you say mom's name too, though. Yeah, I do. And I mom do. says your but, name too. I but feel the like thing, a- I think the thing that cemented that was, so um, for years, if dad needed, we had a phone in the garage. Remember the oh, phone yeah, that was the in the garage? phone on the wall. And on the wall in the garage... There were that was the phone book yep. because every number for people that he usually called was written down on the wall so that when you went oh. there you could find it. But for whatever reason, sometimes there was not hundred percent. There was not the number that he needed. Mm-hmm. And as a little kid, and you too, all of us, we can remember. I know what you're going to say before. Can I just do it? So yeah, y'all don't think this. Yes. Yeah, so do. So do. Surely. No, Dad. Dad comes over. <laughs> oh. And he needs something, and he goes to the phone, and he's looking. And one, his eyesight, his, he needed glasses to read. So yeah. he, he had a pair of glasses laying on the ledge inside the door. Right. And sometimes, if he thought he had the number, he would put those glasses on, and he would look on the wall, and then he couldn't find it. So then he'd be pissed. And he'd open the door. And call for Shirley. And and it didn't matter where my mom was in the house. It was. You could hear the yes. footsteps. And you, yep. <laughs> you guys... For those of you that remember, I mean, God bless some of the people watch, and they must just be like, I do not know <laughs> where this is going. They are talking about. This is on Barn Talk. But for those of you that remember way back in the day, it really was yeah. like Archie Bunker and Edith, yeah. which was a show, the Archie yeah. show or something. Archie Bunker. But he would yell for mom, Shirley! And she Where's well, Give me Moe's Levy's number. Yeah. And here in Washington, Iowa, back in the day, before all this, you didn't have to give the whole number. You'd be like, five, seven, five, one. Because everything was six, five, three. You already was, knew it was six, five, and you'd three. you just punch into the phone, wouldn't you? Three. Yeah, you didn't have to dial, dial three, one, nine. Yeah, three. You d- and you didn't even have to dial six, five, three no, when we were kids. Three. You just dialed three, three and then the four digit number. Five, two, dick, dick. Yep, you better not it. give out numbers because y'all will be calling them and people will hate you. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, de- oh, speaking of that, I was devastated when I came oh, home and yeah. I found out that Torky and Trishy had gotten rid of mom and dad's landline. Yeah, that you know, that's a regret. Um, <laughs> when, you know, when it got to where they didn't... What? Well, they, they didn't... They couldn't use a phone anyway, yeah, and so we had one cell phone. My dad had a cell phone, and we didn't need to have that landline. But in hindsight, that was so dumb. Thank you, I should have kept 5155. That was Don't the... Don't give it out. Why? They can call somebody else. I know, but... There's somebody that's going to get the call and be like, I'm not. Don't call that number. Yeah, don't call that number. But oh my gosh, but mom all the time. Like again, we refer to her as Shirley. And so again, (laughs) there's outside of soy, there's Cliffy, Clay. And I got to acknowledge my other nephew because. My older brother or my my older son. My oldest brother. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're wondering who Soy is, that's my nickname that Trent calls us. Does nobody call you Soy? No one knows that's my nickname. Oh, you're Sawyer on the show. We might need to put parentheses underneath your name now. You know. Well, thanks, Trent. We tried. He wanted to switch. I wanted to. I wanted to keep my. We've been introducing him as Cletus. What you, did you really? No, oh, it's fine. Okay, people don't. Uh, yeah, he's never been. Soy he calls me. He calls soy, me soy milk, soy, soy milk, soy boy, soy sauce. Just, you know these guys. It's I'm a nickname person. You are. You're totally a yeah. nickname person. But anyway, you know Cliffy Clay. What? We just call you shithead. <laughs> yeah. Trent is like a lab. He'll re, he'll just answer just anything. anything. <laughs> um, hey oh. Jack Wagon. Uh, but Cl- Cliffy would. I remember a story when I would when we were home and when I heard my sweet nephew, young five year old Cliffy, saying, Shirley <laughs> Yeah. Shirley, right. get in here. And I am sitting in my parents' living room and I'm looking at this small child and I am going and I looked at him and I said, What are you saying? And we were home visiting, you know, Tessie and I or whatever. And, he just looked at me. <laughs> I said, you 
Do not call your grandma Shirley. She is grandma. And he looked at me and pointed <laughs> that at little you. little shit said, you are not the boss of me. <laughs> and I was like, wow. I'm going to have trouble with these two children. We're, I And now, of course, I just... At There's that no point, uncle that adores the ground that his nephews walk on more than I do. But I'm at like, that point, Trish or Trent kind of questioned uh, Torque's parental ability. I did. Like, what I kind did of a monster are like, you raising? You guys, we need to sit you down and give you some parental parenting. It's not like we never called her grandma. Oh, we just gosh. heard you guys say but it. Yeah, we got, look at how quickly we get off on that tangent. Yeah. So our mom is sure okay, but she's mom. We love her. Loving the stories. Let's come back. We, we need to. You need to introduce yourself. Where you live now? Okay. I will. Where you live? How old you are? Okay. A little bit of backstory of what you're where, where what you're doing now. All right. What year you left the farm? What year you left the farm? All right. So uh, we'll all get back to it, and I do just want to end to say that you know this barn is amazing, and that you all set Thank this you. up. Just like people that. don't even know. I'm like, wow, you put a lot into this. So I'll just okay. say that first. Just so wait. I'm just trying. all right. Just stop. Okay. Because I wanted to say this. So. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that because, and, and this is, this is on Sawyer because Sawyer had this vision. I did not share the vision because to me, as you, this is just the old barn. This was forever the hay barn. And I didn't see, I didn't see the, I didn't see this. I didn't see the potential, but Sawyer, and you could, you can speak to this, but you know, you, you're the one that really pushed the idea in everything that we do to be to be genuine in it. In other words, you wanted this to be here mm-hmm. and to look the way it does because you didn't want it to be plastic. You didn't want it to be. You wanted it to yeah. be the real deal mm-hmm. and have the connection to the farm. And well, so, yeah, of course. I mean, we weren't really using this barn for anything. We don't have horses. We don't have sheep anymore. Goodness. We used to have sheep, and they were dumber than a post but anyway yeah this barn wasn't really getting used much and i'd come up here and i used to have airsoft wars with my friends up here <laughs> with the hay bales and stuff when all the hay was in here and that was super fun but i haven't been up i wasn't really up here much after that and so i just thought you know there's not very many barns built like this out there i mean if there are there i don't think they're at this good of condition so i felt like it was just a space on our farm that wasn't getting used and there's not very many farm podcasts, you'd say, I guess. And I've always thought about starting a podcast. I've seen it's a good it's a good form of media. People like podcasts, and I thought we could add it to our the brand we were building. But yeah, I've I definitely wanted to keep it as real as possible, and I wanted it to be including that legacy, you know, including that family farm aspect because. That's 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 our whole motto. I feel like everything we do, whether you watch our farm YouTube channel, whether you watch the show from on the podcast show, Barn Talk, we're just real with you. Yeah. We're not gonna front. We're gonna show you what a family farm is. And yeah, like like Trent said, this and is what re- family looks like. Yeah, and family. I mean, <laughs> that's that's yeah. we might want to rethink some of that. Yeah. <laughs> With the next but, guest. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's real hay, it's the real floor, know, not fake floor. I mean Everything here is real, and I and the yeah. forks. I mean, I think that's super cool, and Ugh. we want to keep yeah. it as real as we possibly can for you guys. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's came a long way, but we got a long way to go, and I'm just glad that it's taken off, and people seem to really love it. Shout out to you guys, and also I'd like to say if you get value from the show, you thought it was entertaining, share it out to people because that's, right. that's how we're going to grow this thing. We want to grow or organically as we possibly can we want you to love it and if you love it all we ask for you to share that's the that's the ticket for admission to watch a show we just ask that you share it and send and send some ac because the ac is not very good yeah if you see any of us sweating which we all are right now i think we're glistening we're glistening (laughs) we're glowing we're glowing that's what's happening and if you'd like to order one of these beautiful (laughs) this will do farm yetis we can send this to you again if you'd like to sponsor one if you sponsor one show, we'll send you the lid. If you sp- sponsor two, we'll give you the base. Thank you so much. And that is sixty nine ninety five. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Trent. Thanks. Okay, so Trent Whistler right, is... Me. Yes, I am the middle brother, and um, this is just fun to come back every summer. Of course, 
I do this whether Barn Talk was here or not. I've been coming home for years. And again, when I joke about, um, who's the guy that sang Country Roads? Take me John Denver. John Denver. Denver. Sorry, John. I just, yeah, I did used to love that song. But I honestly feel like that's kind of one of my songs because when it talks about Country Roads. When you're getting on the plane, are you just home. bumping John Denver? No. Okay. I don't. I'm not really on my phone or anything. I'm just like, will the plane take off? My flights, <laughs> I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about will it, will it land? <laughs> yeah. My flights are always the ones that are like, will I make it or will they be canceled? But um, yeah, you know, I've been coming home for a long time. I uh, obviously, um, as the middle child, I graduated high school in 1980. Such a long should we do? Time should ago. we just pause on that? Yeah, let's do. Moment that should echo, Torky, when you're editing. Uh, 1983, and you know, at that season of life and time in my life, as I said, I come back, and you know, with the years of coming home as an adult, there were also those years that I was like, I am not coming home. I am out of here. I am doing my own thing. I'm, I'm gonna blaze my trail. You know? And that really was me. I mean, you know, it it wasn't. It was a different journey for all three of us boys growing up and what once was you know that that was a negative today that's a positive because I appreciate so much you know the perspective of our older brother Todd and then of course Torky and Sawyer and the family and all of this and um but yeah so I graduated in 1983 I mean I left and I now currently fast forward the whole ball game believe me that's a that that's was a hell of a, a ball that's game. That's no longer a podcast. That's called a lifetime. That's a movie. book. That's a book. <laughs> <laughs> lifetime television with Trenny. Uh, but uh, now, currently, I live in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, my wife Tessie. I have two daughters, and I have three grandchildren. So, and they're all boys. And awesome. They took, they took the three boys of us. And they magnified it times 10 because now as a oompa, they call me, instead of grandpa, I'm oompa because I never associated really with being a grandpa. I mean, look at me. <laughs> Soy and I could be twins, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's 21. Uh, comment, like, comment. Like leave, your, leave your comment on that statement. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, I have a little struggle on that. That's why you wear the baseball cap. It pulls everything up and back. Uh but, you know, I'm kind of like our dad, I think, in that way. He was not really tuned in to aging. Let's no, face it. No, he wasn't. He was not. And I do think, though, dad and I are not alike in a lot of you areas. You are alike, though. That is an area where we're alike that I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not getting older. You know, other just people getting get better. older. I'm just getting better. Uh, but, yeah, having three grandsons now after having two daughters, it's very different. So we all live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and our girls used to come back here, mm -hmm. as Soy knows, when they were growing up and through their junior high and high school years. I mean, it was, you know, Torky said something on one of the podcasts. I don't know what uh, version. What was that one we watched last night? Episode. That was Lawrence. Whatever. That was dad's long journey home. Yeah, the long journey home. But if any of you uh, picked up on that, you know, pr and probably a lot of people didn't, but there was a portion in there where, you know, uh, Torkey had said uh, that, you know, their dad, our dad, and his brother, Ray, their relationship sort of went, yeah, you know, fell south. apart. And so there was a split of the farm and everyone went their separate ways. Interestingly enough, for me, as the sensitive child in our family, I was more of the feelings type person, which I can look back now and see that for our dad, I think that was a good thing, because he didn't know that, that chapter in life, as you clearly got out of the war, I didn't know the chapter in life of being, just get over it and let it go. But I was raised with that, and I, I fought it all the time, because I always felt things, you know? And I still feel things today, and it's made my brother a better person. Uh, but anyway. I'm not dead inside. <laughs> no, it's not. But anyway, all that being said, um, at a young age of hearing the stories, I knew that for me, I did not want, I, I had this childlike fear of not wanting that to happen to our 
family, you know, like our brothers and, and have it be like, why, you know, you don't understand it when you're a kid, you just grow up with it that, well, we don't really see our uncle and his wife and the cousins and we just don't all get together. And it was a little bit like that on our mom's side that we didn't really know them. And for whatever reason, perhaps it will be one of the gifts that, you know, God sent me to created me and sent me to this family. And I was a part of to be, but I just never wanted that to be something that infiltrated into this family. And not to say that we haven't had, you know, some tough times, but I'm just proud that we've worked through them. And, you know, not all family does because no. I am a hairdresser in Lancaster family, in, Lan Lancaster family, Lancaster County. Um, you know, some of you are wondering, what does he do? What job does this guy have? Well, there I am. I have a little studio uh, in small town, little Lancaster County. Well, small town it's compared really. to small town Washington, yeah. it's not so tiny. But we used to have, my wife and I, Tessie, used to have a salon here in Washington, Iowa. And um, we lived here for a few years. And it was just truly, uh, it re, I think the purpose of us coming back here and the purpose of us living here, so many reasons. It was those last few years with our dad, you guys, yep. you and mm -hmm. Cliffy's grandpa. I'm thankful for those years, though there were some rocky times. And with mom, that was a part of it. It was a part of it to develop a small town um, business and see in myself that I could do it because we did it. And the people that came to us here in Washington, Iowa, were absolutely amazing. We met some beautiful people, and I still have those beautiful relationships. Mm -hmm. These are memories that I took away from my 1983 high school graduation years that weren't so great, you know, growing up in that time. Um, but I'm thankful for all those memories. And it's it made my business, I think, today what it is, because I'm like, if I can do it there, I can do it again. Right. And I've done it, and I'm just grateful. And thankful and that's when you were when you were a kid so did you ever have the desire to to farm to be on the farm like did you ever when you were like when you were a little kid you probably did because yeah you know i don't think i did because those uh those skills that I had weren't <laughs> really so weren't, they weren't very good. So it never crossed your mind. It never really well, crossed your mind. I was the one doing because Todd got to do the writing, John Deere lawnmower. That oh, and you got to push your lighting writing. John Deere. Uh, shout out to the Zero seven degree, the seven eighty John Deere. You know, whatever. We, we got a new mower this year. Um, and we got a 780 yeah, John Deere, yeah. and it is a monster. It's yeah. got a 72 inch deck on it, and it yeah. it is cooks. Oh, it just yeah. it thing is so Todd good. Todd drove the little yellow cedar 214, green. and we would mow Saturday morning mowing. It was an all day event. Yep. You check in to the ticket counter at 7 a.m. and start mowing, and maybe you're done at 5 p.m. <laughs> I think the beautiful thing about that was that you guys, there was a gap there. So when you guys were mowing, I I was watching, Cartoons. I was watching Super Friends, yeah. drinking your soda. I, I was, I would yeah. get a big bowl of uh, of honeycombs, yeah. go to the honeycomb hideout, and uh, Pop was in the basement. I don't think Mom probably approved, but I would get a bowl of cereal and then a bottle. <laughs> A glass bottle of Pepsi out of the fridge yeah. and watch uh, Thundar the Barbarian. I love Thundar the Barbarian. I never could figure out what Ukla the Mock was saying though. I don't know. Who I couldn't that was. get it. it I don't stopped. know. No, because you were out Bunny. mowing. You well, were mowing. And it stopped with Bugs Bunny with me. <laughs> it was kind of it. But yeah, I so I got the short end of the stick as I always did. Well, I pushed. Yeah. And when we upgraded to the self propelled. Right. push mower that you pulled up on the bar i yeah. thought wow dad bought a mercedes without knowing that bought that was the best for you but i didn't mind the push mowing because there again very simply and as a little child um i associated very much with um jim robert jim rogers 
and um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. That was probably the show that I associated with the most because it was the neighborhood of make-believe. Yep. And I, from a young age, for some reason, created a neighborhood of make-believe. And in my mind, it was a beautiful neighborhood. But I would be mowing the yard, and we never went to the Iowa State Fair. Nope. And we lived in Washington, Iowa, and it was in Des Moines, right? But we never went there. I remember taking a trip to Pocahontas, Iowa, and I thought, in my childlike mind, I was going to Disney World. We were going on a family You're going to see your aunt. We were going to see dad's sister, uh, Aunt Frances, that you've talked about. But I swear, I thought it was, we're going on a trip. I heard through the family, you know, we're going on a trip. And I thought I was going somewhere amazing. But as I would mow the yard, you asked me the question, did you ever want to farm? I don't think I... You wanted to go places. Being it real, I don't think I ever did because of so many things. You know, I just... Didn't have it. I mean, that's... It didn't... It wasn't in my DNA. I didn't know the words like DNA. This is not my vibe. I mean, this is where I lived. We had to mow the yard. We had to bale hay. had to wash hog pants. Had to walk... Beans. The bean field. Oh, gosh. Have you all walked bean fields? <laughs> you know, I'd block that out of my memories. We've never really oh, talked about that until you dredged it up. <laughs> and then you have a grandpa who oh, you would gosh. go up. I was the chosen push mower. There's a reason that I was chosen for push mowing because my grandpa rewarded that skill. Of, it's like dad flying. You shared mm-hmm. the story. He flew those other planes and then it was preparing him for war because he had already been trained. Well, guess what? In small town, middle America, I was trained on a push mower only so I could go to my grandpa's house and learn how to use the push mower on the side of the bank. And I, out of all three of us, I was the best one to use the push mower in the banks of his farm. And then I would go through with a five gallon, 10 gallon, I don't know what bucket, and pick up all the rocks and the sticks. This Man, is what I did for fun. You, you must have done a really good job. <laughs> I did. I never and got I think any. They would give me five or ten dollars, and I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm rich. But you know what? It's what I did, and I liked going to my grandma's house. Yeah. What are the lessons you learned from living on a farm? So you didn't, yeah. you didn't, you didn't want to farm, and that's not in your DNA. That's a that's, good that's, question. Thank that's, you. So there's much. a lot of far, family farms out there with kids that don't want to farm, and there's right. people that do, and then there's people that don't at right. all. So yeah. it's all part of being in a farm family. You just warn about it and that's right. fine. So for you kids that it's not your thing, there's hope for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause it can, I bet it can seem like, Oh man, I'm, I don't want to do, I don't want to carry on. I don't want to do the farming. So yeah. you, you kind of might feel a little bit like well, uncharted for me, territory. For me, in all honesty, it didn't feel like, a where I had failed until unfortunately years later of my in my life if I want to be real I mean you know when I came back as an adult and I saw my brother this is where the stories you know people think oh they're just they get all get along so well it's just like candy cane candy out land. there candy land yeah <laughs> whatever and you know it's not I mean yeah. you know Todd goes off to be this big business tycoon in you know Dallas Texas Trini here stumbles along the journey of, you know, I went to, I remember going to travel agency school and mom and dad, of course, helping me through travel agency school. And the reason I went to tra- travel let's, agency school. Let's just pause and say that uh, how many, how many different vocational really? schools have you been to? Oh, I knew he was going to freaking go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I just, I, what's the list? You've heard of. Throw him under the bus uh, on the farm. We throw him under the tractor. Okay. We'll just say you've been to no, a few then. I went to a few things. Yeah. So you were well, just no, trying to find your way. Me, really. It's really, I here's the to, thing. Here's the thing. It's not a bad thing no. to figure your shit out. I need chopstick. We talk about this. It takes time to figure your it's stuff out. True. Some people figure it out faster than others, but. Exactly. Well, and. You figured it out. Some people lie to themselves. Oh. Some people like the pressure of yeah. having it figured out is so strong True. that they put on the facade that, oh, I got it figured yeah, out. Least, I'm going to college. I'm going to major in this. Say, I'm going to farm mm-hmm. because I want to impress my dad or whatever. Or, yeah. And you just, you know, what I mean? you went your own. Yeah. yeah. You went your own way and well, you committed to that. And all of my friends that I had, I, you know, they care well, so much about what I did. 
it's like every high school kid that when they get to, you know, they get to the their senior year and oh. what do they do? They stand you up, they stand you up in front and they everybody goes along and they say they say, "Oh, I'm Torque Whistler and this fall I'm going to be attending the University of Isn't Iowa and just... I'm going to major in this." And in the in their mind they're like, "I'm Torque Whistler and I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I'm hoping I'm to drink a lot this, of beer." So parents don't get all Yep. Oh. I'm it, scared. Like, oh, that kid's is going to be no going nowhere. I'm Thank scared to tell my parents that I don't have any idea and I'm just hoping to have a good time and maybe meet somebody that's like me. Yeah. That is so powerful. Yeah. I mean, it's so true. Let's not do that anymore. Yeah. So at least you, at least you were smart enough. I remember when I did that, I, yeah. it, I, I did, I ran track and played football and I remember senior night. That's what they do. They line up all the seniors with right. their parents and they get on the microphone. And I said undecided because I didn't know if I wanted to farm or I wanted to go to college. Hey, And I remember just, I it, felt so crappy about that. And I felt like everybody was looking at me going, well, this kid doesn't have a chance. Did one of your friends? Oh yeah. One of my friends, shout out to Kale. He helps <laughs> us with the pigs sometimes. Our senior night, our senior night for football, our senior year, uh, we were all this lined up good. in front of the parents and you know everybody's got their parents next to them uh if you're a senior playing football and then the crowd's right there and the announcer goes down one by one you know telling you who this person is what their future plans are whatever it comes to my buddy kale and he goes <laughs> kale or i don't know how the hell you say it but pretty much he told he told the announcer he wrote down on a piece of paper that he was going to go play alabama play football play for football alabama at alabama <laughs> full ride <laughs> And Kale was a great football player, but he was not Alabama five star. You know, he was just doing that to mess around, and that was the biggest belly laugh. Yeah, laughed it was so awesome. Hard. I wish I would have done something like that. Me I, too. I because it is kind of a joke. Yeah, he totally it is. was like, screw this. I'm gonna just write down something funny, and I wish I would have done that. But. Yeah, because I feel bad for kids that feel that pressure. Now, granted, and I was. Now, granted, if you are that age, if you if you know yourself well enough, and you have a passion at that age that you can honestly say, you know what, I'm going to this school and I'm going to major in this because this is what I'm passionate about. Yeah. Hey, props to you. Props to you because, but most people, most don't. people don't. Oh. Heck, I don't know what I want to oh, do yeah. when I grow up. Exactly. So, yeah, I was totally there. Yeah. I did. I just, I think I Along did. Along with yeah. a lot of people. I'm yeah. sure I lied. So, well, I'm going to Kirkwood Community College majoring in communications. And one day I'll pretend that I'm Miss America in comedy and say that I'm majoring in communications. And I have. There you go. Watch for it on my local channel, which I don't know what that is. Well, you know, it's good. There you go. Another it's party good. foul. Another party hey, foul. Uh, did you mix? Oh, but that's a commercial break. I just knocked <laughs> over my beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Did you put any, did you put any Bloody Mary mix in that or did you just uh, put ice and or vodka? Ice and tea or ice and water or yeah. cranberry juice. Could be. We don't really know. You never had that great of fine motor skills yeah. anyway. Thank you. Um, what I was going to say was, you know, in hindsight, it was probably good that you didn't have that desire to farm. Um, so I could. No, that's not what I was going to say. Uh, was because gonna say you graduated. Yeah, because your ass wouldn't have been here. <laughs> I would have had. It well, would have been mopping my barn floor. It would have just been. It would have just been that much harder for me to push you out. You know, <laughs> so that's go. good. Yeah. No, what I was going to say was, ni- there's 1983. Would have been. It would not have been a good time yeah. in agriculture. Um, so you know the 80s. Um, I, I and the, you know dad never dad never made it like he never offered that to any of us cuz I've asked Todd this question and I'm sorry who's Todd Oh yeah that's yeah, right I'm sorry yeah, the older brother <laughs> Just kidding He's Todd. not Todd's not here to defend himself so um but you know dad never said to any of us as far as I know or asked us if we had any desire to right, farm right because when i came home well when i when i came back from kirkwood when they probably said hey you you don't really need to come back here um you don't come to class anyway so you know we kind of feel guilty about taking your parents money but anyway um when i came back and i told dad that all i really wanted to do was back farm, in the day that colleges did that 
Right, right. Now they'll Today, take your. You can take walking classes. And I know where take was all your money. And where they will was be those like, classes? Oh, he's doing so well in walking. We really need to keep him. Well, his and, ass is great. And wine and spirits. One of Sawyer's friends has got his senior year. He's got oh, yeah. you know. One of my buddies is wine he's taking a class. He, no, he's taking a beer class. Yeah, you just sit there and talk about beers and drink them. I'm like, go where was that when I was at Kirkwood? Yeah. I oh, could have got. I could have pulled. A, I could have pulled a pretty decent. Great point average, which I guess it's good that I didn't have that. All, all those kids are doing is just trying to rack up the credit so they can graduate. And that's inst- why they and take walking. That's why they take wine and spirits. That's why they take these beer drinking classes. And what they are they care. paying? And what are they paying for that? And they're for paying that? stupid they're just money for that. up the debt for I that. Mean, anyway. So, yeah. So, oh, anyway, when you graduated in 83, the farm economy was not very good anyway. And so, but that, op- like, you never... Did you feel like that was even an option? Yeah. It wasn't even in no. your mind. Yeah. My sights, in all honesty, by then were set on, I just get out have of here. to move away. I got to get out of here. I have to go somewhere. I wanted to go to L.A. This wasn't my place. Yeah. you know. And I am a believer. Uh, with all of the humor, the joking, the whatever beside, by the time my senior year, I did have you know a faith in my life. And I truly did believe and this is for me. For me, I believe that, you know what, this isn't my calling. This is not what God has created me to do. And I am a person that I do. I believe right. that, you know, God does have something for each life to do and right. a purpose and all of that. And though I was young and twisted and crazy and, you know, um, frustrated and angry and bitter probably in a way and all the stuff that goes on, I think, in a lot of young people's lives of trying to figure it out. As I look back, I just, I was secure enough to step up to the plate and say, I've got to go somewhere. Right. And so, you know, there was a singing tour at that stage of my senior year, and there was um, a wonderful youth pastor, um, uh, Jeffries. Pat Jeffries. Thank you. Pat Jeffries, that was our youth pastor at our church, at the Presbyterian Church in Washington. And God bless him, for he helped navigate me. I was singing throughout high school. It's the one thing that, along with washing hog pens and you were good at using the push mower and using the tractor to back up the hay clusters into the hay mow, <laughs> I could also sing. And though <laughs> I look at my own one of my daughters today, you know, McKenna, who does sing, and I'm like, she sings so differently than her dad. And I'm like, yeah, I was not very good. Because I look at her and I'm like, yeah, you're really good. And I'm not so good. But uh, I did sing. And, you know, the world, the church, my family, my parents, they encouraged me to sing, you know. And dad and mom, you know, I think as every young child, Dad always validated that and made me feel like that's something that I did that was halfway decent. So, you know, yeah, I had auditioned for the singing tour, and it really was the first, like that was the first time on a big bus Uh carrying a suitcase, going somewhere. And like a week before, I was like, no, I'm not going to go. And he was like, well, by God, you're going. You are going, and this is what you need to do. And that was a life-changing moment. It really was. Our dad helped me. Because mom, I probably could have convinced yeah. not to go. Well, mom was the easy so. Well, Lawrence, maybe he doesn't need to go. That's just let him stay home. That was yep. our mom. She was very loving. We make fun of her, but she was. But I went. And, and from then, I mean, it was good because I did experience, you know, traveling to all these cities and, and All over the world. And, yeah, I did. I mean, I went to Europe and I, you know, and then Celine Dion and I did our first single. Oh, sorry. That's, I'm living in Candyland. And she cut you out. <laughs> the neighborhood of make-believe. Back to Mr. Rogers. Uh, <laughs> country roads, take me home. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, uh, it was good. And I'm so thankful that our dad had a part of saying, I don't know how to get your butt out of here, but you're going. Yeah. And I did. And certainly then I went on to another singing tour after the summer tour. Because it was a three-month tour after my first one. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. Still, Just do it again. And then there was a nine-month tour that the director had asked me to be a part of um, as his tenor. And that's the one that Tessie was on, my wife today. And so mom and dad said, well, you should just do the nine-month tour. So they, I think, were equating that to, well, that's his associate of arts degree. 
if he would go two years. Yeah. And it was in meeting Tessie that, you know, she had graduated from cosmetology school. And finally with her, I felt like kind of a safety net that I could say, you know what? Out of everything I thought about doing outside of music was kind of like hair. Yep. And that was not a really popular, cool thing to do in the farming You're ahead of the community. Curve. So anyway, yeah, I just I did that and I met Tessie. And when tour was over, I came home and I said to mom and dad, I need to move to Portland, Oregon. And I, you know, got on a plane and my our, you know, our folks helped me. I mean that is where another thing that you shared about our dad, and then, I don't know, should should we talk about farming and all those things? That people are going to be like, what the hell is this podcast about? It's taking a turn. Uh, but, you know, I really rewind the tape because something else that you had said, you know, of course, our dad was 40 years old when he got married. Yep. A lot of dads who have little ones are in their 20s. Mm-hmm. And they still have this relatability to them. Right. And I think, you know, for, as you've said it beautifully, Torky, with all of the stories that you so eloquently do that I know people appreciate, and it's amazing how well you articulate them. And I am thankful for that because I did not, you know, you were the one to be able to spend time, you know, with our dad to really get those stories. And I didn't appreciate them to the way that, probably Todd did or you did. Somehow I was that child that got up and I was like, oh, for the love of Jesus, we're talking about the war again. Right. And I didn't, there was no interest. Right. And I'm, you know, I get it though today. Just right. took me a little bit longer. But that's okay. Um, But yeah, you know, looking back and rewinding the tape, I'm so thankful that I really did have, as much as what, how he did not know how, our dad did not know how to relate to that child who was both academically delinquent and farming delinquent. I was the middle child. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, <laughs> academic uh, delinquency because I think that broke him in. I I think that um, had Todd been the middle brother and Todd set the bar very high oh, yeah. uh, academically, yeah. There's nothing worse than when you walked into the first day of of whatever class in mm-hmm. high school and the teacher oh. would go, Whistler, are you Todd's brother? Because if they said, are you Todd's brother? They were expecting big things. But if they said, if they said, is Trent your brother? <laughs> then you were like, oh, whew. this is There's the bar. For tomorrow. <laughs> the bar is not going to be as high. So... <laughs> He was a social god. <laughs> well, right. And, and that's right. That's where you get so, it, Torquay. But you're right. In we the love fact the people. That, you know, my, my high school, and yours is the same way. You don't equate your high school experience with anything to do with academics no. because you just hope that you got through it. True. And that's how I was. No. Um, but when people, when people ask me about high school, I had a really good time. Yeah. I didn't learn a whole lot. Yeah. But the thing was, I think I was a lot like, and Sawyer was this way. And at least, at least we gave him the, the ability to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Because, you know what? I, so, you know, if you ask him, he's learned more in the last few years about what he wants to know. Right than what he learned in high school. And I'm the same way. Academics, grades, never interested me. Yeah. Never interested me. I was just trying to get by. But when you started talking about sports or money or business or farming, I was all ears, passionate, right? wanted to know how to learn it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, yeah. I was talking to your Aunt Tessie and I was, you know, we were talking about you guys and Cliffy and, and just where you guys are in your 20s, you know, and you know, we got off on that tangent. And of course, I'm the proud uncle and we don't need to spend too much time on that. But I mean, you are 21. And yeah, sometimes I, it's just I don't feel beautiful like it. to be an uncle and step away from the parental side that you share at this table with your dad and just be, you know, the, the uncle. But I'm just, I feel like with my own girls, you know, I mean, I'm just, and really with all of our, let's face it, the family of these young people, this includes mm-hmm. Todd and Missy in Texas and the kids. Just tuning in to those who they are 
and their strengths that they have and the things that they gravitate toward and encouraging those things and allowing for them to blossom. Honestly, it sounds like a paid program and I don't mean it to, but again, I'm just an uncle and I can't help it. But living here and coming back here and being closest to this end of the reason I come here and not in Texas is because I wasn't born in Texas. Right. The farm is not in Texas. Right. So it's not that Todd and I don't have that and Todd and Mitzi and all the kids. It's just that we have that because this is where I was born and raised. And as I said, from the time that I left, even though there were rocky times, I, I did always have kind of like to your point, Soy, of what you said a few weeks ago on that podcast that you feel sort of this already, this responsibility to carry it on, to take from what one day your dad will pass down and will be gone at some point. It just is the circle of life. The circle of life. There you go. There's that voice. There's that voice. Wow, that was powerful. Call me Celine. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, it is. It's the circle of life. You know, that beautiful Disney movie that really does show it that it's going to happen. Like it or not, we all move on. Something happens. The young ones take over. And I appreciate in both you and Cliffy, you guys supported him to be his true best self. But then I look at you and you're the walking poster child of that. But the reason you are that is because like you guys spoke two weeks ago, the legacy. And I don't know if some people watching take that away to maybe we need to take a step back as a family and go, wow, look at these guys. They're all so freaking different. I remember at the end of our dad's funeral, one thing I remember, because we pretty much led our dad's funeral, funeral. service, uh, and that beautiful pastor allowed for us to do that very graciously. But I remember him saying at the end something along the lines of, you know, isn't it great to see just these are three different sons yes. with three different sort of stories. Ex stories and examples. But yet look at the legacy that Lawrence left to his children. And I, I think it's really pretty powerful. And it is. I, as a hairdresser, I will say in my own world of stories, I'm not going to sugarcoat it to say that I hear from a lot of people with a lot of farms land, whatever, across America, that our story truly is unique. Because there are a lot of people who want what they want, and they better get what they want to get. And there's, this is my house, and this, and it gets destroyed right. in the midst of all of it. The legacy does not get to live on, and it's worth speaking to, because it gets clouded by all the other stuff. And I'm just thankful for us that Somewhere along the line, I just realized, you know what? It's not my thing. It's okay, but oh, somebody else knocked over You're their drink. You're spilling it all over. Party foul for Which Torque Which is now. a commercial at this point. What he just knocked over, ladies and gentlemen, was the beautiful <laughs> This Will Do Farm Yeti that you can order through our website if you'd like we to. We don't have a website. We don't we're going to have we're them, and I'm going it. to be the face of showing these. Sixty nine ninety five. dollars <laughs> oh, No, yeah, I think, right? yeah, you're right. It, you... It's good. If you if you're a farm family, you got to keep your eye on the legacy because yeah. you, you. I think people forget the fact that. Well, I always go back to the fact that one percent of the people in this world get a farm, or one percent of America Americans farm. Like that is you're you're already a one percent of the country if you mm -hmm. get to farm. So why when you are in those disputes between your family, just think of that stat alone because if you piss it away. Good yeah. luck getting. Yeah, in. you'll never get it. You'll back. never get back yeah. in, and yeah, it's not. It's not as. I mean, it's. It can be profitable if you get smart and you do. We've talked about this, but you know, farming what it was back then being profitable. This is how you grow a family. You wanted a farm. You can grow your own food. You know, it's profitable. All this mm -hmm. thing. Now it's not as an amazing deal as it was back in the day, but it's still a great opportunity. And it's really great. Yeah. It's a great thing to do, but. It's got to work between everybody and the family, yeah, and it and doesn't. Everybody and it doesn't. It's Most of the time, it doesn't. It's very, me. it's very. Because another thing that people have told me, and then I'm going to be done. But another thing people have told me is they're like, it is crazy rare that you, Trenny, as a lot of my people call me Trenny, uh, you are 55 years old. 
you have left a farm and yet you're still going home to the yep. same place because a lot of them are sold. Right. A lot of them aren't there anymore. And I'm still 55 years old and the chances of me being 60 and 65 as long as praise Jesus as long as I'm in, you know, good health and continue to you know, just be how I am or whatever right. that I'm going to be able to come back here and that we're we are going to see your kids and the other kids and all the generations. Hopefully Beautiful. some hopefully some grandkids. There will. Hopefully there will we be. get some I'll, grandkids. I'll get, we'll get there eventually, just oh. not yet. I gotta, anyway. <laughs> got to hire well, an editor first. Right, we got to get an editor. What else uh, do we need to cover? Well, I think that's a great point to end on. And Well, I want to say one, I want to go down one more rabbit hole. Yes. Before we Ooh. end things. Dun, 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 I dun, think dun, it dun. would be funny and entertaining for the folks out there mm-hmm. if we all went down in a, in a triangle here okay. and told our most embarrassing moments on the farm. Like the oh, most ooh, like got mine. embarrassing. It already comes. Do you want to you want to start? I sure can. Go ahead, Trent. Easy, okay. Easy. Well, there's a few. I want it. I have in my mind what I think it is. So go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you know what? We have not prepped this, and I'm just going to trust that people think that that we haven't because we really didn't. No, we haven't. I didn't oh, come this is all. We didn't. This is all here. on the fly. I was up here at the barn yesterday, as far as being at the barn at yeah. downstairs. But I literally did not want to come upstairs here because I wanted to be in the moment today. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm sitting here in the hay mow that dad used to be, you know, trip it is, are the words. Drop them. Were, were echoing in my mind. You know, dad was on the hay wagon. I was pulling it back. I don't know. There were two or three up here in the hay mow. Mm-hmm. And this is what we did every summer. And I hated it. You like, this- you like sitting up here better than... No, you? I honestly think I liked sitting on that tractor because there was a breeze. Yeah. Y'all need to put some air conditioning in here. I know, we're all well, Anyway, back to that. What do you think, Torky, that my most embarrassing story is going to be? Well, if I had to... Well, you need to tell it, but you can just guess. Well, I'll just... Right. My guess is uh, harrogating on the diagonal. Yeah. Harrogating. Oh, yeah. Okay, see, uh, even that, I'm like, what? Harrogating on the diagonal. Now, let me interpret harrogating on the diagonal. How I interpret that is... I was in the field right smack dab across North from 20. where we are, and there was a little red shed out there, and I think there was a white shed, you know, as far as in the sheep pasture or whatever pasture yep. that was. It was just, oh, my gosh, there was a lot in that pasture. So evidently, Dad still had hope for me at that time that he could tell me what to do on the tractor, show me the gears, show me the brake, all I had to do is just sit there and drive down one end of the field, back up the other, drive down one end of the field, back up the feather, and I was good, right? No, that's not that's not right. I mean, you're not giving enough detail for the what? people that don't know. Okay. So at that time, we plowed everything. Right. So we plowed. So you plowed the field the same way the roads were the rows were planted. Okay. But the goal was to have that that field like powder remember how because we were planting we were planting corn with a with a 495 four row planter and there was no such thing as trash wheels or down pressure springs or air anything i mean it was a mechanical deal so to place the seed you wanted that seed bed like three and a half inches of just like potting soil so you plowed straight but then a harrogator, a harrogator was like a heavy harrow, uh-huh. and it broke up the. Well, you remember? Well, I do. It's just you're you're such a farmer, Torky, and you're talking to your brother here that I'm like ah, uh, but uh-huh, yeah, uh huh. So you harrogated uh-huh. on the diagonal. Yeah. So you crossed. Oh, I crossed it. Remember? So you ran at an angle. Well, I really. So in all honesty, I'm like um the guy here, but the only thing I really do remember to get to the punchline is. All of a sudden, the fence was following behind me, and I was like, "What is this tug?" All of a sudden, on the is that called the Harrogator? The Harrogator. Well, one of my spikes, eight of my spikes. I don't know how many of those spikes. Right? It had spikes, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, I remember that. Well, I didn't know, but I was pulling out the fence, and it was following me. <laughs> well, and Lawrence Whistler came marching. <laughs> yes. the highway and it was not pretty i thought 
Oh, I'm here going comes. to be buried out in this field because he, <laughs> as wonderful as, as I said, we finished the race well, but rewind the tape. And as a young child that I was, I feared the ground we all feared that him. he walked on. And I was like, oh, crap. All I knew was to turn that key off on the tractor. Pull the stop. And we won't, we don't really even need to share the words well, and the conversation. Let's just say, so one of my favorite Christmas movies is Christmas Story, mm -hmm. about the kid that wants the Red Ryder BB gun and you'll shoot your eye out. But there's a great line in there when he, his dad goes down to the basement because the furnace, like black soot, comes out of the vent. And, you know, it's kind of being narrated by Ralphie. And Ralphie says, my dad was one of the best furnace fighters that there's ever been. And he's down in the basement and you can hear him. And it's, you, he's not using real explicatives, but it's like, mother trucker, bring and bring. Yeah. And he said, my dad used profanity like other artists used oils. <laughs> and that always identified because if you were going to get your butt chewed by, by our dad, yeah. Uh, he used profanity like other artists <laughs> used oils, <laughs> and it was it was not going to be it was not going to be a short right. outburst. Um, it's going to be fairly lengthy, and it's going to yep. be very detailed in the amount yeah. of names that you're going to be called. Yeah, that was one. Of, yeah, I mean, and there is just one is that more the one you were thinking? So you oh, ran through the fence. Yeah. Well, I just pulled the fence out. I didn't run through and it because I could see it. what was ahead of me, but I just clipped it on the side. I got too close or something. Yeah. And he, let me just tell you. He was so not happy. No, he wasn't. And so that kind of, that let go my ability of being in the field. He did not try me out again. That's why I say. You I probably, was a good lawnmower. I was good on the tractor pulling the hay up, and I was good at washing the hog pens. And he just utilized me in my best giftings, because the last one was, real quick, I was backing the truck out of the, the pickup. garage, the pickup, and, you know, of course. Clip the mirror. Oh, I think I took a clean the off. He <laughs> took a clean off. I think I broke half the wall or something, and that kind of caved in, and the mirror came off. And I remember that one. That wasn't good either. I was like, crap. <laughs> and then my senior year of high school, I backed my car out of the garage, and I hadn't put oil in it for probably a year, so that caught on fire. <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to do those things. Oh, oh man. it was a challenge. Challenge. Caught on challenge. fire. What was yours, Torky? I mean, there's multiple, multiple, like Thank we were you, talking Lord. about this the other day, like um, when we were sorting pigs, my dad had the, the in and the by. So in was not really in because in was, was staying in the pen and you couldn't get it confused that that was letting a pig into the alley yeah. and then by was letting that pig go by. The and, uh, when we would sort pigs to sell, we would we would sort, and I was I was the gate runner when because my brothers were either gone or in school to where they were doing something, and I was available, so I got brought up from the miners. Yeah. But you know, um, weight is subjective. So um, as you're bringing the pig up there, oh, that pig looks big enough to my dad. So mm -hmm. it was like, buy buy that pig is going out, and then. And then at the last minute, oh, no, it's not quite big enough. So in. in. Well, but you thought, bye. So the gate was open. So you let that pig out. And then the head shake and the explicatives of why did you let that pig, you know, bye? Well, because you said so. No, I said, I said in. Yeah. Well, yeah, you said in, but Seriously. you said bye five times before you yeah. said in. But you didn't dare say that. Yeah. No. And there was nothing more demeaning than... You know, if you really got it, and it was the pigs, it was the pigs that frustrated. We're going to do a shirt. We're going to do a t-shirt. Well, that's how it is. We're going to do a t-shirt that says on the, it's going to have, it's going to have, this will do farm on the front and on the back. It's going to say, I'm sorry for the way I spoke to you while we were loading pigs or something like, I'm oh, sorry for the epic. names I called you while I loading pigs. It. But anyway, you know, I can remember that's as a small good. kid. Well, yeah, it's the just, frustration. Just constant. Handling yeah. pigs, it's not... You're but not, it is, but the thing not, is... You're not mad. You're like, the little thing set you off because yeah. the pigs piss you off enough yeah. to where you're yeah. getting to the breaking point. But, and if someone makes a mistake, mm -hmm. yeah. 
yeah. you can't yell at the pig because they're not going to know. Right. We do yell at the pig well, sometimes, but yeah. and with Lawrence Whistler, it was not all. It was not the pig. It yeah. was you. Yeah. You messed it up. But the <laughs> I guess you know what the one that we should talk about, and because you and I share this, the only one of the brothers that was ever able to do a good enough job cultivating to have that job was Todd, because I couldn't cultivate. Yeah. Um, so my dad, our dad, we had a 60 John Deere with a four row front mount cultivator and he had the shovel set out so wide that if you didn't drive precisely, you were going to, you were going to tore out the corn. You're going to tear out the corn mm -hmm. because he wanted maximum cultivation. Mm -hmm. And there was something about a two cylinder John Deere before long your head's going before long your eyelids are going next thing you know you're about falling asleep i could not focus and he would get mad and finally i worked myself out of a job because he just was convinced there was no way that torque was ever going to be able to cultivate but todd could cultivate but i never could because it was just a constant frustration i guess my most embarrassing um moment was when i had the chopper cultivator cultivator oh the the bestler no it wasn't the bestler oh it wasn't the bestler i know it wasn't it was oh the fuel cultivator fuel cultivator yeah. <laughs> and i forgot to fold it up so i got done <laughs> using it That's right. and i you know i've been in the tractor all day pretty much i'm just you finished the home, field finished the field i'm ready to get home I'm ready to be done and I didn't think anything of it. I lifted it up out of the ground and I forgot to fold it back in so it doesn't all the way out. Right. And I'm driving and I'm not hitting anything at all while I'm getting out of the field and I get to the road. I'm still, I still haven't hit anything. And I just start going on the road with that 30 feet. 30 feet just folded out. 30 feet. If there coming. was a car coming, they, they got to put it in reverse, dead. Terry, because it's, they would have been screwed. But luckily, no car came. No. Nope. I made it home, but I did smash the mailbox. Yeah, he Took wiped. out the mailbox Somehow completely. Somehow I knew you were going to say it was the mailbox. Took out the mailbox oh, completely, and I remember just Dad looking at me down at the patio where I live now, and Mom and him were out there, and he just looked at me, and he was just giving the Lawrence. Giving the head shake. Giving the Lawrence shake. You actually handled it pretty pretty well. You know, You didn't really chew my butt too much. Um, That's beautiful. But he, yeah, I totally took out the mailbox. I'm pretty hard on myself, so when I do that, I, yeah. I was, I was pretty pissed at myself about that. But I'll never make that mistake again. That's right. You just gotta. <laughs> it's the thing. You gotta be about we the little details. Yeah. When it comes yeah. to farming, about big equipment, you gotta be, mm -hmm. gotta be precise. You gotta but think. Every, you know what? The thing with farm mistakes is they gotta happen to learn because That's you're right. never gonna learn. And I'm sure every farm kid can relate that you've messed up something yeah. somehow. There's a million mistakes we've all made. And okay. before you close this out, Torky, can I just say, really, this was kind of fun. I mean, thank well, I'm glad you it was. For letting me. Come We're glad in we this got morning. you start. We started. You your guys are career. rock stars. I just all of the people that listen to this and watch it, as you all say, click and subscribe. It's worth it. It's so y'all are beautiful people. Well, thanks. This well, we great. appreciate it. Uh the temperature is rising. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sweating, sweating pretty good. I'm gonna I need, need a, a shower. Yeah. Um, so in closing, I want to say, you know, you've endured through these podcasts, and at the, ever, at the end of every one, we say, hang in there. We're getting gas. You know, we're going to keep working on it. We want you to get value out of this. So thank you to Trent because he's our first guest. Yes, shout but out to Uncle Trent. Wasn't probably a whole lot of value. But oh, no, there's was, value there. There was value. There's there was no was doubt there's value. Value can be in many so, ways. Yeah. All right. So what's coming? We have our first, second guest. You are our first. We didn't know that you were going to do We were unsure if we were going to have Trent on the podcast. This was an impromptu This was guest. an impromptu, off yes. the cusp. We figured we got to have Trent on since you're here. Also, his birthday's Wednesday. We're celebrating at Dodici's. Yes. Gonna Shout out to Dodici's. There tomorrow Shout for out to Dodici's. Yes. Twenty second birthday. <laughs> right. Right. Now my younger brother Trent. Yep. There you go. But uh, yeah, we have another guest coming on. I think next Friday is the shoot day. We're gonna do it. I I think I'm gonna wait to tell you guys about who it is. But I think you guys will really really enjoy him. He's a fellow farm YouTuber. Puts out a lot of great content. 
and it's going to be a really, really interesting one. So we do have guests lined up. We're finally getting some guests. So that's awesome. We're going to get some more in, in the future, but really looking forward to the next one. This was a really good one. I'm glad you guys got to meet my uncle Trent, Torx brother, you. Trent. He is, he's the man. He's the myth. He's the legend. We love you too. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week and we will see you next Friday. Uh-huh.